Hey everyone, Cody here, and today we're going to be doing a Gerard Richter, you know, style, well, kind of, uh, inspired painting. So we're going to do l full layers of single colors. The colors we're going to be using today are kind of this, uh, it's turquoise, uh, black, white, and gold. I think that those are all really good colors together, so I think that this will probably turn out pretty well. Um, I've got a piece of watercolor paper. It's not acrylic paper, it is watercolor paper because I had a bunch of it, so I'm just trying to use it up. Um, I'm going to be painting on this little board here. The board is just uh, like a foam board, foam core board, or foam board, I don't know what you call it. Um, I got it at the, the craft store. Really, I'm just using it as a flat surface. Um, and then we're going to tape off the edges with masking tape. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't recommend masking tape because masking tape uh, can rip the paper. However, I'm currently out of painter's tape and I just, you know, have not gotten around to getting more, you know, in between dealing with kids and work and all that stuff. So we're going to go ahead and tape off the uh, edges here. And this is going to kind of frame the painting so that it's got a you know uh, an outer edge to it and ideally these paintings when you you know if you were to sell it or frame it on your own you would want to uh, basically get a mat for them so that it covers the edges anyway and that's why you know it's okay that we're putting the tape on there because we would basically want them matted anyway so not a big deal Okay, just making sure you guys can see it. I'll zoom in a little bit here, just so that you can get more of it uh, in the shot. Okay, so we've got our piece here. Uh, today we're gonna be using this uh, plastic uh, scraper. I think you would call it a trowel, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, it's like a drywall scraper. You can get it at Home Depot. Uh, or I think you can get them at Walmart too, but you know, it was like a couple bucks. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, I wanna start with the darkest and uh, so we're going to start with the black and then what I'm thinking is kind of working our way up to the turquoise and so maybe doing black and then white to balance those out and then doing gold and then turquoise to balance those out and real quick I just want to see if I have any other turquoise just in case I run out um, looks like I don't really have the same turquoise so what I may have to do here is use a different color um, I've got this turquoise here it's not quite the same this is more of a uh, this is a phthalo turquoise so it's a little darker than normal so I'm hoping I have enough here but I actually don't know we're gonna find out so let's go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and start with the black and we're going to go all the way down so that we uh, we can get this whole single uh, layer. Now, if you've ever, if you don't know who Gerard Richter is, or if you do, basically he he uh, he does these large. He tends to do these really large paintings. I don't have the supplies or the the money to do the large paintings that he does, uh, but he tends to do like big blocks of color. And so, and excuse me for the noise. Uh, but we're gonna put a decent amount of paint all the way down. Um, and you know, it looks pretty thick, but it's, it's not gonna go the whole way, I can probably, I can tell you that. So then we're just going to take this paint and we're going to pull it straight across. Now, one thing about the foam board uh, or your surface is that you'll wanna do this on as flat a surface as possible. I used a piece of foam board and a couple of my other videos the other day that was bent and because of that it actually like it was kind of bowed out so the middle wasn't getting I wasn't able to push uh, as, as much in the middle so because of that the paint wasn't spreading as much as I wanted in the middle so we're gonna go ahead and carry this paint all the way down we want this kind of rugged look um, to show up in the paint so we're gonna pull that push it down pretty hard but not like super hard and it's going to create these rifts in the paint not a whole lot I can do about that without um, 
you know, not pushing in other areas. So we're gonna pull this out. We're gonna drag it as far as we can. That one actually got a good one. That one, that one. And this paint smells a little bit. <laughs> All right, so let's try to pull some of that out, pull that out, and pull that out, and that's good. All right, so next, we're gonna move on to our next color. And I'm not going to flip it over yet. I might on some of the other, the next colors, but we kind of want this, this disruption here because it's going to showcase different colors. So by having that little disruption where it's not fully solid, it's perfectly fine. We actually want a little bit of that. So then we're going to go ahead and run our white down and we're going to pull that through. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to clean this off. It's, it's not going to matter. A uh, whole lot. There's not a whole lot on there. So now we're going to pull this white through and you can see that automatically I mean if I had cleaned it off you you would see more distinct color. I could flip it over but you know it's fine. So we're going to pull this through. I'm going to overlap this bottom layer just a little bit. Now the harder you press um, the more it's going to push these colors together. So you can see I pushed less here that's why there's these big blocks of colors so if i went over it again and pushed a little harder you'll see that they disappear okay i don't want to do it too much because i don't want to run the white out like i don't want the uh i don't want it to disappear so we're gonna push kind of we're gonna push flat but not too hard so that we pull that white through we're gonna do it uh one more time here i'm gonna push flat so that we get the white pull that through and then one. I'll put some paint right there and then the last time we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna push it flat to kind of pull it through and there we go. Okay so now the only issue that I have is that this stuff right here is not getting covered. If I just kept doing this over and over again it might fill it in but it might just keep leaving it white because the paint's not reaching. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna go ahead and flip it over and we're going to work our next set of colors the other direction. So I want to do the gold next because I kind of want the turquoise last. So we're going to go ahead and build up our little wall of gold paint. And essentially this is just Li Liquitex Basics gold, um, but it's in like a little pouring bottle. I don't know what the difference between this and like a little tube of it is. I don't know if it's the same. I don't know if it's thinned out a little bit so that it's easier to pour. I honestly don't know if, it, if it's any different than, I don't know if this, is any different than this? I don't think it really is though. So now we're gonna pull this uh, this gold through. And we're gonna just pull it right back against the grain. And pull that, and we're gonna kinda push down and not super fast because I kinda want it to fill in these gaps here. Okay. And we still have a few gaps where the white is coming through. Now, this is one thing I didn't really go over. Um, Guard Victor usually does paint his background first. So I guess I could have done that first. Could have done a solid color, like maybe the turquoise. I could have done on the back and then done all this. So I didn't really think about that. And sometimes I don't do it. So it's just my personal preference. It's something I don't like to do. I kind of like the, the colors being unique. However, you can run into this issue where you have the background showing. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of fill in these little gaps because with the next color, you're not going to see the little like fingerprints because it's going to pull that out. So we're just going to fill in these little gaps just so there's not like the raw paper coming through and good there. And then we'll, we'll kind of do it here and see what, how that turns out. So we'll just slowly pull this gold. I am pushing pretty hard because I do want this paint to cover the, the gaps in the paper as much as possible. Uh, so I don't have to fill in a whole bunch of gaps with my hand. And we're kind of past that point, so we're just gonna go ahead and pull that through. And we will do the same thing here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and put my fingers closer to the back so that it, it pushes it down. Pull that through, and we're gonna get those nice waves with the gold. And pull that through again. 
put some pressure on it. There we go. We're getting a lot of that gold at the top. I like it. Ooh, that's a nice little, that's a nice solid gold line right there. All right, and then we're going to pull this down a little bit just to kind of get that top layer. Try to get as much of that paint on there as possible so we can paint that background. And then we're going to kind of taper off just because I had that gold there and I wanted to keep it, but it looks like I did lose it a little bit. That's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fill in that gap there. Um, looks like we got most of it covered. So I'm going to fill in this little gap here. And again, yes, I am just working this with my finger. Uh, when I go over this with the turquoise, it will fill in. It will kind of cover those. Um, so that is pretty much it. The rest of it uh, got covered, which is great. Again, if you do a colored background, oh, we got right here. If you do a colored background, it will fill in those gaps. Okay, so now we'll do our last um, we'll do our last layer here before this acrylic dries. It is starting to dry already. It's nighttime, but being in Arizona, it's so hot that it, it's still pretty warm out. So this acrylic is drying. Ideally, you would want to paint, you know, somewhere where it's pretty cool, like maybe in the 80 degrees range, uh, so the paint doesn't dry as fast, but. I don't really have a choice because it's really noisy in my house, so I can't uh, I can't really paint in the house. Okay, so now that we've got the turquoise, uh, looks like it was enough, perfect. And we're gonna go ahead and run this turquoise over, to pull into these other colors, and this should be our final layer. So we're gonna apply some decent pressure here to kind of pull this turquoise as far through the painting as possible. And it's okay if it kind of, uh, I would say, overshadows the other colors just because I want the turquoise really prominent here. And so we're gonna, we're gonna pull that through. And you can kind of play with how hard you push into it. That will change how much of the, the paint gets left on there and how much paint kind of gets pulled through. So we'll just kind of pull that through. I don't mind if it uh, doesn't cover the whole thing because this will actually give us some variation on, uh, you know, give us some variation on the painting so that you can kind of see all the different colors here. And then I'm going to taper off so that it has like this rugged look to it. And we'll pull this turquoise through. And there it is. So the only thing that I kind of don't like is this right here, where there's a lot of, I guess, where it's like torn up, I suppose. So I am gonna pull this through one more time just to kind of even it out. And now you can see that it, it pulled it through. And we'll go over that with those colors to kind of pull those back into it and that will kind of even it out and now that's actually pretty good uh, so what that does is like if you ever get these little pockets it's because you pulled it off too like too soon but i'm okay with this because i didn't want it predominantly turquoise i wanted the turquoise there but i wanted you to be able to see the different colors in there it's got a lot of movement it's got a lot of kind of vibrancy to it i actually do like it a lot so now we'll pull the paint or the tape off to kind of get the uh, the final piece here so I don't know if I moved that down. So let's go ahead and pull this tape. Now again, because I'm using masking tape, it is definitely not ideal. Okay, I'm not, again, I, I already know that you should probably not use masking tape for these paintings. I just didn't have painter's tape and I probably won't for a while because I have tons and tons of masking tape and I'm trying to use it up. I don't like having things that I don't use if possible. Just kind of, just kind of how I am. So, I'm gonna pull that up. Just set that aside real quick. And it's uh, very sticky, so it doesn't want to come up. All right, let's see if I can get this bad boy up. And it already wants to rip. 
and just kind of pull it nice and slow so we don't rip the painting. Just try to pull it as straight as possible so that it peels off with very little resistance. Just peel it, peel it, peel it, peel it, peel it. Straight back, straight back, straight back. Nice and clean, that's what we want. And perfect. All right, that's two out of two out of four. Set that aside. Let's see if we can get this other bad boy here. Come on. It really likes to uh, stick to this foam board, apparently. All right. The ripping noise bothers me. It's it's because it's sticking to the foam board, so the noise is kind of kind of unsettling me, like it's gonna rip the paper. But so far, it's doing pretty good. All right, cool. We're pretty good there. I think I just go ahead and pull this last piece off. I'm gonna hold that in place. We're pretty good here. There, it started to rip a little bit, but we're okay. Good, yeah, you can't really tell. All right. Ah, tape is sticking to everything, so it doesn't want to come off. Get these gloves off, and I'll show it to you guys. All right, so this is the final piece here. And I apologize if the light is not good. Light in my garage is... No bueno, but let's see if I turn this off, if that helps. Nope. I'll try to get some better lighting setups in here in the future. But essentially, uh, yeah, you can see the different layers of gold and silver and turquoise. Um, that's it. I don't know. I It turned out pretty good. I like it. And uh, that's it. And I'll probably be doing more of these, the Gerard Richter style and the dabbed painting with the gloss enamel when I'm able to get some more. Um, and then a lot of people have been asking for the Jackson Pollock type paintings. That's also gloss enamel. So when I'm able to get some in the next coming weeks, I will go ahead and do more of those videos as well. But that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. And if you liked it, please like, rate, share, subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in another one. Take care, guys. Hey, Cody here. Thanks again for watching this video. If you liked it, please consider leaving a comment, a like, or sharing the video with someone else. And also, if you did like this video and you want to see more videos in the future, consider subscribing or turning on notifications. Lastly, if you like the painting that you saw in this video or any of the videos you've seen, many of them are for sale and you can see what available paintings um, are available for purchase by visiting my website, CodySchwabi.com. There is a link in the description below. That is all. Thank you again for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in another video. Take care, guys. Bye.